Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. In this showcase tips and tricks, you will learn how to create a keyframe animation. I have here three elements that I'm planning to animate. I will open the door, the window, and minimize the column. To do so, I'll be using the keyframe animation that I can find under the behavior menu of Showcase. First, we'll create an animation to open the door. The door has been created of two different elements, the glass panel and the wooden door. Now I want to animate both of these elements together, so I'm going to open the organizer and make sure that I select the group door and therefore I will animate both of these elements together. Now with the group door selected, I will create a keyframe animation under the behavior menu. First, let's rename the keyframe animation to door so we can easily identify it. Secondly, because we already had selected the door, a keyframe was added to the time frame at the initial position for this animation. Let's have a closer look on how we create keyframes. Now, this is the initial keyframe that was created upon loading the behavior. I can slide that keyframe upon my time or enter a precise keyframe time where I want my keyframe. To add an extra keyframe, I hit the little key and plus button and the keyframe will always be added with one second apart. To remove a keyframe, I select the keyframe and press the little icon with the minus button. So next, what I will do is enter a manual keyed in 60 degree rotation on the Z axis and add a keyframe. I can choose to move the keyframe to a later time, for example, two seconds. Now I want the door to stay in this position for a few seconds. So without moving the door, I will add an extra keyframe and move it at frame five. So the door will stay in this position for a few seconds. Next, I will change the rotation of the door back to minus 60 degrees, so to the initial position, and add an extra keyframe. I will move this keyframe to time 7 seconds. So I now have a keyframe animation that length 7 seconds in total. I can easily jump from keyframe to keyframe using the navigation button. But to play the animation, I have to open the playback control and hit play, stop, rewind, reset to the beginning and play again. Notice that the organizer is showing an animation icon to let you know that this door is now animated. You can use the playback slider. As long as you reset the animation to the beginning, you will always be able to play it rightly as it was created. You can at any time change the properties or the keyframe length of this animation. Let's move to the window and create a keyframe animation to open this window. The window was created with two elements again, and I want to make sure that I'm choosing the group of this window. Now I'm going to create a keyframe animation without having anything selected and rename it window. Now we'll have to associate some element to this keyframe animation in order to create the first keyframe. So I'm going to add the window as a selection and automatically it creates the first position keyframe. So the window is now closed and that is my first keyframe. So I'm going to move the window to an open position. So move it up and add an extra keyframe. I'm going to move it at second two. So we'll take two seconds to open the window. I will create an extra keyframe so the window stays in this position for a few seconds. Then I'm going to move the window again to a mid position and create an extra keyframe. I'm going to add an extra keyframe so the window stays in this position for a few seconds and finally close the window, add an extra keyframe and move it at nine seconds. So this is a complete loop of my animation. So I rewind the animation and I can jump from keyframe to keyframe to make sure that I am happy with all the position of my keyframe. To play the animation, I open the playback control, rewind the animation, it's play, and I can see the animation in action. 
I can at any time change the position of this keyframe or change their timing in the timetable. Since I am happy with this animation, let's close this keyframe animation and concentrate on the column. For the column, I will be using a scale keyframe animation. So with the column selected, I will create a keyframe animation. Because the column was selected, automatically the first position keyframe was added to my selection. Now the action I'm trying to create here is to have the column grow in front of my eyes. So I'm going to minimize the scale on the Z axis to a zero size so the column will look like it's growing in my scene and I'm going to add a keyframe and move it to frame 5. Using the playback control, I'm going to be able to hit play. Now when I hit play, I realize that the column is big and it's becoming small, so I'm going to reverse this keyframe. The last keyframe, I'm going to place it at frame 0, and the first keyframe, I'm going to move it to frame 7. So I now have the reverse action. The column starts by being small and becomes bigger in front of my eyes. Now I would like this growing action to happen from the ground up. So I'm going to move my column at the bottom of my ground. Now let's see what happens if I hit play to this animation. Because I didn't save the initial position, when I hit play, the column goes back to the floating position, which was my initial state. So I need to correct that. I need to readjust the first keyframe. So let's do that again. I'm moving my column at the bottom of the floor. And I'm going to erase the initial keyframe and create a new one and move it at frame 0. So now, if I hit play, you'll notice that the column is growing from the floor position and going towards the ceiling. So it has the effect that it's growing from the floor, growing up. So this is more like it. Now I have three types of behavior using three different type of action. And I can hit play under the behavior menu and see all these behavior coming to action all at once. Using the playback control from the behavior menu will play all the behavior all at once and you can activate each behavior individually by using the playback control of each behavior. Now, to help identify each of the behavior, you can set an image per behavior. To do so, focus on the elements that the behavior is attached to and set the image. And you'll see that the thumbnail has an image identification representing what the behavior is. This will be helpful to identify the behavior visually. Now that you know how to create keyframe animation, make sure to look at the next tips and tricks which will show you how to use trigger to trigger your animation in presentation mode. I have also recorded a bunch of tips and tricks that will show you how to add these behavior to a storyboard slide.